In this video, we're going to go over pulling data from Strava and saving it to our database. The first step in that is to actually create a mechanism for us to pull data from Strava. Starting off, we're going to install the Strava library by doing a pip install Strava lib. This is the library that we're going to use that someone wrote in Python so that we can easily pull data from Strava without having to make requests to the API ourselves. Once it's installed, we're going to go ahead and create a helper to help us create a new client object that the Strava library has to be able to pull data from Strava. So we're going to open up our core mixins file. We're going to import our client from Strava lib. Then we're going to create a Strava client mixin. In that, we're going to create a method called get Strava client, and we're going to pass it a user. This is to pass in a user object from Django. First line of this is going to be Strava equals user.socialauth.get, meaning we're going to get the social auth object associated with our user. For now, we're only associating one account using, Jing, or using Python social auth with our user, so it should work just fine. Later, if we choose to add more authentication systems to connect to other sites, we need to go ahead and move this to a filter and filter on Strava. For now, though, we aren't going to be doing that, so doing a .get will work. The next thing we need to do is we need to return a new client object instantiated with our access token from Strava.tokens from our social auth object that we got the line previous. What's happening here is we're getting a client object and we're using an access token for each individual user. That means later on we're going to have to call Strava and create a new client object for each individual user that we have an access token for so we get that individual's specific piece of information off of Strava and this is how it ties to a specific user to pull down the correct data for that user. So moving on let's actually go ahead and put this into practice. If we'll open up our shell, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import our new Strava client mixin. We also want to get a user that has a Strava association. And then we want to go ahead and get our client object by instantiating our client mixin, calling our get Strava client method and passing it in our user. Since the method that we're going to call is an iterator and only calls Strava once you actually start iterating over it, we need to create a list called acts so that we can add data to it so we can access that data later. So we do for act in client.getActivities. This getActivities method is going to pull all the information or all the activities that this particular user has on Strava. In this case we're using mine and I don't have a lot so it's going to go fairly quickly. And then we're going to add our activity object to our acts list. And this activity object is going to be a Strava library activity object and not one of our own. So now that that's done, if you look at our acts list, you can see we have a list of activities that have been used. We can pull one of those down and we can see the ID, we can see the name, see the distance and we can get the unit of that distance. We can also get the number or the distance that's been traveled and you can get that again with a method call. So with all that in mind on how to actually access the data and actually get data from the activity object, let's go ahead and see how we can save this to an existing object. To do that, we'll open up our activity model and our activities app. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new method called update with Strava. And we're going to pass it in act, which is going to be the Strava library activity object. So in this case, we're going to take the object we're going to pass it into an existing object, an existing Django activity object, and then we're going to just pull the specific data and save it to the attributes or the properties or the fields on our activity object so that we can save it to the database properly and do processing with it later so that we don't have to keep continually pulling data from Strava every time we want to find out what's going on. So we're going to do self.externalID equals act.id. So we're setting an external ID of the Strava of Strava's ID for this to ours. We're setting the distance. Then we're also going to set the distance unit so that we can properly do calculations. And note we're doing the specifier on our unit instead of using get unit, which if, if you recall earlier pulled in an object. 
So this is basically what we need to do for every field in our object. So we're just going to go ahead and complete this out. So with all of our fields set, the only thing left to do is save our object and then return it so that we have an updated object for our application to use. If you look through the list, you'll notice the one thing that we have not done is we have not associated any gear with this activity. That's kind of a pivotal step since it's the complete idea around the website so that we can track the distance that's happened for a specific piece of gear. However, getting and setting gear is not actually that simple in that the only thing that we get back on an activity object from Strava is the gear ID. We don't get any extra data with it except for that. So in order to associate a gear object with it, we need to actually get the gear object. And if we don't have the gear object in our database, we need to actually pull down the data from Strava as well and save it. Then we can set the gear object. So to do that, we're first going to check if we have a gear ID on this activity. Then if we do, we're going to do self.gear since we have an association. We're going to do self.getStravaGear because getStravaGear is going to be a method that we can call. And we pass it in an activity object, in this case self we pass it in a gear ID so it knows which one to try to get. And this gear ID is going to be the Strava ID and not the ID from our database. We haven't actually written this method yet, but this is the idea of what's going to happen. It's going to either get an existing piece of gear, it's going to get an existing object from our database and return it and associate it, or it's going to create a new object then it's going to get the right data from the Strava website and set it to the new object that it created, then return that gear object for this activity. Then on every subsequent request, it's just going to get that current object that we need. So to actually make that work, let's go ahead and write the method. So we're actually going to use a mixin for this, and we're going to open up our gear mixins. And we're going to create a new mixin called class Strava Gear Mixin. We're going to inherit from our Strava client mixin that we used earlier so that it makes it easier for calling our Strava library. We're going to create a method of get Strava Gear that we called earlier, passing it in an activity and a gear ID. In this case, we're setting it to none because there might be an instance where we might need to get a piece of gear and not have a gear ID available to us right away. That's more for a later video. Then we're going to do an import of our gear model. This has actually caused me some circular import errors that I haven't been able to figure out yet. So for now, we're just going to do our import in this location. We're either going to get our gear or we're going to create a new one using the get or create method on our objects. And we're going to set our, our user to our current activity user. And we're going to set the external ID to the gear ID. So now, if a piece of gear exists for a user, with these two pieces of information together, then it's just going to pull it back and it's ready to go. If not, it's going to create it, and then if it creates it, we need to do additional processing. So we're going to check if created. We're going to get our client object like we did before. Then we're actually going to get the data from Strava by doing a client.getGear and passing it in our gear ID. So that's actually going to call it. It's going to pull down all of information. And then we take the gear object that we created and we do an update with Strava, passing it in our Strava gear object that we got from our Strava library. And it's going to work the exact same way that we set our activity object to work. Pass it in the Strava library object to the object that we created and, hits, and it saves it off and saves all the relevant data. This saves some of the tedium in other parts of the code of trying to map the fields together. Then finally we're going to return the gear, whether it's the created one that we, that we just got created or the one that already existed. Then we have one final step for this long chain of events to work is we need to add our update with Strava method to our gear model. And that's going to look very similar to our activity model by setting all the same information, saving it, and then returning it. So with that said and done, let's go back to our activity model and import our new mixin that we created of our Strava Gear mixin. Now I want to mention that this is neither a best practice nor not a best practice. I have seen it used in some places and I have seen it not used in other methods used. I've been experimenting with this concept, so I leave it up to you whether you want to add a mixin to a model or not. 
The reason why I'm using it is because this make sense will be used in other locations, not just in models, but also in views as well. And then with that, I think we're actually ready to get going. So if we we'll open up our shell, you'll see we're at six. That means we've already done stuff. In this case, all the previous thing that, things that I did earlier to get the activities, I've gone ahead and done for us so we can get straight to the point. If we we'll look at our acts list, you'll see we have a bunch of activities. So we'll take off the first two for act one and act two to see that we have our activity objects. Now let's go ahead and create activity objects from our current application. To do that, we're going to do activity one and we're going to instantiate a new object and set the user. And then we're going to do update with Strava with Act 1. And as you remember, it's going to set all the proper fields and then return the object. And as you can see, we've done that. We could do that with Activity 2 as well, doing the exact same thing. So finally, let's go ahead and inspect one of the activities. Let's do Activity1.name. The name is set. The distance, the distance unit is set. And then finally we can go ahead and double check that the gear worked by doing activity1.gear, seeing it returns an object. If we set our gear to that gear, then we can check that if we pull back all of the activities associated with that gear, we get the two that we just created earlier. And really that's it. That's all there is to pulling in data from Strava and going ahead and saving it with an object. This is going to make things very simple for pulling it down and saving it and gets the logic of actually saving off the data handled in the model instead of somewhere else in a task or a view or a form or some other place that we're going to use it. With that being said, now that we're able to save our data from Strava, join us in the next video where we're going to create our tasks to consistently pull data from Strava.